Welcome back to DIY with KB. If you're new here, my name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. In today's video, I'm giving you eight interior design secrets that are guaranteed to save you money. Now, this is not clickbait, you guys. Today's video really is all about helping you save money because something we don't talk about very often is the fact that interior design is really, really expensive. So how do we achieve that luxe look for less? You know I'm giving you all of the secrets today. Before we get into today's video, please remember to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And if you want me to design your home, click the link in the description box for my virtual design session. Now let's get into today's video. One of the best ways to save money when it comes to an interior design project is to shop at diverse places. Now there are so many stores and shopping can be so overwhelming. If you know me, you know I love Home Goods, I love Ross Dress for Less, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, I love stores like that. And I don't just love them because you can walk in and get instant gratification, but I love them because they buy wholesale. That means that companies that aren't always accessible to the normal person sell their products through there. So luxury companies like Ralph Lauren and Tahari, they sell their products to those companies and we're able to get them for a better price. You have no idea how many times I've walked into a home goods and found a luxury item for $50, $100. And that might seem like a lot of money, but compared to the original $300 or $400 price tag, you are saving tons. It's also really important to shop at diverse places because different stores can carry the same item, maybe with a different name, but they can carry the same item and give those items different prices. When I'm looking for my clients all the time, I might go on Wayfair, then I'll go on a Modern, then I'll go to Overstock, then I'll go to Amazon. And even though some of these companies are affiliated, the prices are different. Sure, the names are a little bit different, so I have to tweak kind of what I'm searching for, but sometimes a better will be $800 on one site and then $500 on another. That is a $300 price difference, and that is a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. So when you shop at diverse places, you are more than likely to get something that is going to be within your budget. Last but not least, it's important to shop at diverse places because you never know what a store is gonna have. If you only shop at Target or you only shop at Walmart, they have the same stock pretty much all the time. They only work with a few brands and it's really rare that they add on someone new. So if you're shopping at diverse places, there's more of a chance that you're gonna get introduced to something new and there's more of a chance that you're gonna encounter a sale. So some places don't have sales. Target rarely has sales. So if you're only going there, the price you see is the price you get. But again, if you go to Home Goods, maybe something wasn't selling too well. You're gonna be able to get that item on clearance, whereas maybe at another place you might have had to spend $100. This time you're paying 15. So not only are you not going to buy into trends, but you're also going to create mood boards. If you're not familiar with a mood board, a mood board is kind of just like a fancy PowerPoint of all the things you enjoy. I make them for every single design project that I do. So what that means is I'll grab a picture of the bed that I like and the side tables and the lamps and I throw them all in one big picture and, if, and it helps me visualize those items together. That really stops me from going into a store, buying a lamp that isn't gonna work and then again, getting stuck with it at home and not feeling like returning it or running out of time or it be something that I cannot return. It prevents that from happening because I'm able to clip all of those things and visualize them together because items look really nice independently but it's all about how the room looks as a whole. That's how you get that phenomenal curated look. So Kiva, how do you make a mood board? Well, if you're old fashioned, get all of those free catalogs and brochures to your house, get some Mod Podge and make a collage. If you don't wanna do that, what you can do is you can actually make a PowerPoint, get all those pictures and throw them in there. If you wanna get a little bit more sophisticated, you can use canva.com. They do have free software and they have premium software. If you're into interior design, trust me, it is worth it. I use their templates every single day and they really help me elevate my design process. Last but not least, you can always use PowerPoint. If you know how to use PowerPoint, it's a great tool. It just really helps you visualize the space. And I'm telling you, if you have a vision, you can execute something properly. You're not buying frivolous things that you don't need. Another reason why I love mood boards is that it not only helps you see certain items together, but it also lets you see your design vision. 
Sometimes I'll make a mood board that is entirely mid-century modern and other times I'll make one that is strictly modern and then one that's farmhouse. And then I see what I kind of am drawn to because Pinterest doesn't work for everyone. Sometimes it's too overwhelming. You can't visualize yourself in that space because there aren't things that you like baseline. People get so stuck on, well, my floors don't look like that or my wall isn't that color. This isn't relatable to me. So you're able to make mood boards that have your exact floor colors, your exact wall colors, everything you actually have in your home and then you're able to make a better comparison and you can really visualize things better. Before I tell you more interior design secrets that are guaranteed to save you some money, I want to thank Care Of for partnering with me for today's video. Care Of is a wellness brand that sends vitamins right to your front door. I decided that 2021 was going to be my year of health. I started eating better and exercising more, but when it came to supplementation, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Well, in comes Care Of. I went to TakeCareOf.com and took their holistic quiz. I love that they asked me what my goals are instead of sending a generic multivitamin. When I took the quiz, I decided that I wanted to focus on energy, digestion, sleep, and stress. The questions were extremely in-depth and it felt like I was receiving a one-on-one -on -one consultation with nutritionists in under five minutes. After taking the quiz, I received zinc for my digestion, ashwagandha for my stress, iron for my energy, probiotic blend for my digestion, vitamin D for my bones, and adaptogenic mushroom for my immune system. I've been taking these supplements for a few weeks now and I feel comfortable taking their supplements because the company is extremely transparent and provides you with access to research that backs up the ingredients. Overall, Care Of helps support women through different seasons of life with ongoing guidance and nutrients tailored to your specific needs. And you can retake the quiz as your needs change to support pregnancy, healthy aging, hormone health, and get updated recommendations. And you know that sustainability is extremely important to me, so I appreciate that the personalized daily packs are made with eco-friendly compostable film and instructions on how to compost them can be found at takecareof.com slash p slash eco. Be sure to take the Care of quiz using the link down below to figure out what supplements and vitamins Care of recommends to you. And be sure to use the code DIY50 to get 50% off your first Care of order. Now let's get back to those interior design secrets. Now, if you're one of those people who has really tried to find an interior design style, but you can't give up the trends, your design style is always evolving, what I want you to do to save money is to buy pieces that work regardless of your design style. So what does that mean? Well, not everything has a design style written all over it. Again, a farmhouse sign is a farmhouse sign. But if you have a white sofa, a white sofa can work in a modern home, a farmhouse home, a mid-century home. It can work regardless of your design style. So if you choose something very neutral and something that could be pretty much evergreen, that's going to work for you because you're not buying those big staple pieces over and over again. Instead, you're buying them once and you're buying good quality pieces so that you can have, your, have them in your home for five years, 10 years, 20 years. So you're only making those big time investments once. Then you're spending money on those little things, those pillows that really direct your design style, those throws, those decorative accents. So those things are $15, $20 instead of $1,000, which is a lot of money. Of course, decorative accents can add up over time, but more often than not, a sofa is gonna cost more money than a vase. If you're trying to buy a vase that costs the same amount as a sofa, I'm gonna stop you right now and kind of urge you to reconsider that purchase. So the items that I want you to invest in that are fairly neutral are sofas, coffee tables, dressers, things like that. Choose really neutral basic colors. When it comes to a sofa, I want you to get white, beige, or gray. I'm not even gonna say black because I think black is really harsh and only works in certain design styles. When it comes to coffee tables, I want you to get something really basic. I either want it to be wood and I want it to be like a gray wood or a black wood. I don't really want you to get a true wood color if you might um, go between farmhouse and modern because that doesn't always work. Now, if you don't want a wooden coffee table, I urge you to actually get a glass coffee table. I love glass coffee tables because there's not really much to them. It's a glass coffee table and its entire design is contingent upon what you put on top of it. So if you're really into coastal vibes, maybe you'll put some seashells or something like that. But if you are into mid-century modern, maybe you'll put a clock or some bottles. The decor really dictates the table, but the table works no matter what. Of course, if you get a coffee table that is bright pink on the bottom, you're kind of stuck in your glam design. But if you get something really neutral, like silver or black, this coffee table is going to work no matter what. 
Now this is my all time favorite tip because it has really helped me as an interior designer and as someone who loves having a beautiful home, get that luxe look for less. So what I want you to do is learn the luxury terminology. So what does that mean? So if you like restoration hardware, if you like um, our house, if you like those more expensive stores, spend time studying their websites and seeing how they describe items. My favorite example is the task light. So task lights are a quintessential feature of modern decor. Um, they really frame out your living area. They give you nice reading light and they just look so sleek and, you know, sophisticated. So if you search the term black floor lamp, you're going to get a myriad of things. You might get that horrible light I showed you in my throwaway video. You might get a nice arc lamp. You might get a tripod lamp. You could get just about anything. But if you know that restoration hardware and stores like that use the term task lamp when you want the lamps that kind of sit over the edge of your sofa and really frame out your space, then you're going to know what to search online. For example, the pharmacy task lamp from restoration hardware a pharmacy task lamp is exactly what you search into Google. So not only will that one from Restoration Hardware come up, but also one from Lamps Plus and Wayfair will come up instead. And in terms of price, the ones from Wayfair and Lamps Plus are $60, $99, $199. Whereas those items with the same exact name from Restoration Hardware are $300, $600. So knowing that terminology is going to get the exact same search result, but you're going to be able to get something that is way more affordable. Again, if you're searching for a specific type of chandelier, know that terminology, search the same thing that you see on the luxury stores in Google, or maybe with the word affordable afterward or budget afterward, and then a dupe will come up. Also use the term dupe. It's not a word that I've just made up. It is a word that is commonly used. There are tons of people like me online who are making dupe lists. So they'll give you the luxe item and they'll give you the more affordable item. And you're going to be able to compare yourself and make the decision on what things you want to save money on and what things you don't. Who doesn't love outlet shopping? I hope that none of you are saying me because outlet shopping is absolutely the best. All of the luxury stores, all of the stores we wish we could shop at all of the time, but we just can't afford have outlet stores. But the downside about outlets is you cannot return things almost all of the time. So you're getting the 50% off, the 70% off, but what if you buy a sofa that just can't fit in your car? What if you find the perfect mirror, but if you get it in the car, your wife is going to have to walk home. We don't want to be put in those situations. Know your measurements and don't just know the measurements of your car. You need to know the measurements of your front door, of your living space, of the door to the room you want to put the item in. Know every single measurement and put them in a note on your phone. Keep that information available to you so you know in real time if you can take that item home. This also lets you know um, if you need to get a U-Haul, if you need to call a friend or whatever it is you need to do to get that really affordable item back into your house. Not only do I want you to have these measurements down, but I also want you to have a tape measure with you at all times. So when you're in the outlet, you can also measure those products and make sure they will fit in your home. When you're looking at websites of retailers, they have measurements, but the measurements don't always work perfectly. They might give you, you know, the, wing, the width and the length, but what about the height? What about this? What about that? You want to make sure that all of your bases are covered again so you can fit that item in your car and get it home. So if you have your tape measure, you're going to be able to do those measurements in real time and make sure you're making a good decision for yourself. And while we're on the topic of outlet shopping, I also want you to do your research before you go to the outlet. Sometimes I go to the outlet and I get way too excited. I go to the outlet without anything particular in my mind. So I pounce at the first thing I see. I'm like, oh, what a beautiful chair. It was originally $2,000 and now it's $1,800. And I'm blown away by the $200 discount. Just because something is discounted doesn't mean it's the right thing for you. So do your research before going to that outlet store. Of course, you're not necessarily going to find the exact item you're looking for, but you will have some semblance of an idea of what you want. So if they have that mirror, if they have that sofa, or if they have whatever it is you're looking for, you can go and find that exact thing. Don't get sidetracked by items that you don't need because you're going to end up wasting money. And again, you can't return those items. Another great way to save money is to set reminders on Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp. 
If you're not familiar with Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp, these are websites where normal people are reselling their items. That's where I got my brand new coffee table. That's where I get rid of furniture that I no longer want in my home. And it's a really affordable way to, for people to get things secondhand. And people sell absolutely everything on these websites. You can find restoration hardware, Pottery Barn, Our House, West Elm. You can find just about anything. You just need to know where to look. So what my wife and I like to do is we actually like to set alerts for these things. So I'll say, hey, I'm looking for this West Elm chandelier and I'll type in the keyword West Elm chandelier. And anytime someone posts something with the word West Elm or chandelier or West Elm chandelier, I will get a notification so that I am alerted immediately to that item and I can take a look at it. This makes sure that as items that I'm interested in pop up, I am able to see them immediately and therefore I can save money by shopping secondhand instead of buying things brand new. Of course, the really good thing about these things is that you're able to chat with people and a lot of the times you're able to barter so you can get the price down and you're able to see the damages to make sure that you're not buying something that's not going to be good for you and your home. Buying secondhand is a really great thing because lots of people buy into trends so they're design decisions evolve. So sometimes people are just trying to get those pieces out of their home and they'll let the price down very, very low. I'm telling you, this is me. I do it all the time. I have these bookcases right now. I just want them out. I listed them for $10 and someone's going to scoop them up. Whereas originally they would be spending at least a hundred or $200 per bookcase. Another way to save money is to refrain from buying into trends. So trends are almost irresistible. There's so many people on YouTube, including myself, who make trends videos because every year there comes out with a list of trends and you want to be a part of the group. I have one client who says to me all the time, Kiva, I'm experiencing FOMO. I know it's so hard to feel like you're missing out. But if you come up with a really firm design plan for yourself and for your family, it is really, really easy to save money because instead of buying the new Studio McGee, the new Queer Eye, the new... I don't know, whomever, you're not spending money on those things if they don't work with your design style. Let other people go out and buy those things, but you don't need them. That's why I always say, come up with a really firm design style. I am modern, so that means I'm not going into Kirkland's because there was absolutely nothing for me in that store because it's totally farmhouse. Now, that really refrains me from spending money on things that I'm not going to use. Of course, spend money in places where you know you're going to get something that is going to work for your design style. Of course, I'm always going to go to CB2. I'm always going to go to Crate and Barrel. I'm always going to go to Restoration Hardware. But then I'm not spending frivolous money at Pottery Barn, at Kirkland's. And you're like, well, I mean, that's not that significant. It is because think about how much effort goes into returning items. You don't know how many people I encounter. They're like, oh, I got all these things from Pottery Barn. Oh, it was only $100. It was only $30. Well, that $30, that $100 really adds up over time. And so you're going to be wasting a lot of money. So if you have a really firm design style, you're going to stay out of stores that don't have things for you. You're not going to rack up that return debt and you're going to put your money where your money needs to go. And the last interior design secret that is guaranteed to save you money is to shop in phases. Now this one seems really self-explanatory, but I want to be the person who appeals to you on a human level. It's okay that your home is not furnished in one day. Furnishing a home is really, really expensive. And a lot of the times you're buying a new home or you're buying your first apartment and those things are costly. You have your security deposit, you have your mortgage. It's okay that your home is not your dream home in a single day. That's not practical for most people. And I think that the internet and television kind of glamorizes that fact. It's okay to take your time. So do your shopping in phases. When you first move in, buy the things that you need. You need a mattress, you need some chairs to sit in, you need some light bulbs and just get those things. You don't need to be concerned about having the perfectly styled coffee table on day one. Nobody cares and you know what? That's just not important and don't be embarrassed about that. If someone wants to judge you for not having all of your stuff on day one, they can buy it for you. And quote me on that, I'll say to them, I'll call them up and tell them that they're doing something wrong. So do your shopping in phases. Buy your essentials first and then add slowly. Get those staple pieces that you're going to love forever and then you can accessorize. There's no reason to have the perfect olive tree if you don't have a pot for it to go in or a living room for it to sit in. It's okay. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Those were my eight interior design secrets that are guaranteed to save you money. Everything I said today was super practical because I really want you to design your dream home and I know that it can be costly. Please let me know which one of these suggestions you're going to be implementing down below. I really want to help you create your dream home, so let me know what other tips you need. 
If you liked today's video, please remember to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, have a beautiful day.